Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the DJI Osmos Action 3 Action Cam. And the reason why I got one. Uh, in the past couple of videos I've been using my uh, Pixel 7 Pro uh, to do my filming. Uh, which has worked fine, but there are some pain points with it. Uh, first thing, the front facing camera uh, isn't all that great uh, as far as quality goes, especially in any challenging lighting situations. Um, it works fine for like if you're just doing a video call, um, if you're wanting to take a quick selfie uh, that you're probably just going to post to social media, or uh, like the YouTube Shorts videos, uh, it's fine for that because uh, those are mostly going to be viewed on phones anyway. But if you're going to post something up on YouTube and people are going to be viewing it on anything other than their phones, uh, the quality is really lacking on that front facing camera for this phone. Um, so you have to use the rear phone, the rear camera. Uh, facing camera, which that means uh, when you're filming yourself, you can't uh, you can't see your framing, so you're kind of guessing on your framing, and, and if you're even in the frame properly, uh, you kind of get used to where that needs to be. Uh, just looking at the lens, where the lens needs to be relative to where you're where you're at, so it's not it wasn't too hard, but still a pain point. Um, another thing with this is you have to use one of those clamp grips. Uh, to hold the phone on your uh, tripod or your selfie stick or whatever you're using and with the control all three of the controls being on this one side and as much room as they take up it really leaves with the camera here power and volume here there's not a lot of room to put the clamp on so you have to clamp it like right here um, and as you can see here the screens being blocked so if I need to make any changes or hit the record button, you can see it's kind of kind of hard to do, right? With this, with the clamp being right here, or if you clamp it like this from the back, uh, which you can do as well. Uh, but your your videos are upside down. Now that's a quick fix in uh, DaVinci Resolve. It's just one one button you click, so it's not uh, the end of the world there. Uh, and you know it's just cumbersome overall trying to use your cell phone as your main vlog camera uh, so that's you know one of the main reasons I've got the action 3 cam uh, I'm going to use that as my uh, primary vlogging camera which I know it wasn't really made for that but I think it can work great um, you know and I also wanted to be able to go out um, and shoot my stills photography without having that, a lot of extra gear uh, to, to do the filming. And this is just so compact and there's so little extra stuff I need with this. Uh, it fits in a single case and that's actually relatively small. I mean, it's super, super convenient to use this as your vlogging camera. Um, you know, the image quality is outstanding. Um, it's extremely easy to use. Uh, I love the front facing camera with touch controls. That's really nice. Um, got a little mat there somewhere. Um, you know, overall, uh, I think this is going to work out uh, great for me. Uh, the one main, main major pullback I've seen or drawback that I've found with this Action 3 is that every four gigabytes, the uh, file breaks up. And then when you combine them together, like in DaVinci Resolve, you can have some audio issues where those two files are combined together. Uh, so what I've done to kind of get around that was I dropped down to 2.7K, which gives me about eight minutes of uh, filming before it breaks up. Uh, at 4K, uh, it was like three minutes. Uh, with that extra time, that gives me plenty of time to uh, get my clip out there. Uh, and it's just uh, less uh, that I have to deal with as far as combining the files together like that. Also, the quality, uh, the difference in quality isn't really noticeable, especially... Uh, since the video I uploaded last week, uh, in 4K is still just 1080p, so it looks like YouTube's going to take forever to get uh, 4K footage out anyway, and, and it's just going to be viewed in 10, 1080p mostly anyway, so I'm not going to really worry about 4K uh, when I get smaller file sizes here. Quality's still really great, and uh, it's just more convenient. So I'm just right now I'm just doing the 2.7K with this camera. Uh, I think it's going to turn out just fine. Uh, so, overall, uh, I've yet to go out and actually use this in the field. And that's what we're going to do now. So, let's take this camera out 
and just see what happens, right? Let's see how well it does. Um, and then we'll just go from there, right? All right, thanks guys. here at the lake right now I'm doing a walking test I do have my camera I did find some geese over here uh, we do have clear skies today finally uh, it was cloudy all morning but this afternoon uh, the, the Sun actually came out the clouds cleared out so that's pretty nice uh, so we're doing a walking test here how's this doing uh, it looks fine I do have auto settings right now currently and I do not have the mic and it is windy out here so we're just using the audio from the action 3 itself how's this doing uh, I'm out like I said I've got my camera and this is uh, super nice so far just being able to uh, have this small of a uh, kit here and be able to uh, go out and shoot and film at the same time without uh, you know without having a lot of extra gear with me this is super nice uh, but how's the quality that's the most important thing is this quality gonna be good enough to put up on my YouTube channel I think it is but I won't know till I get back to my computer that being said, uh, overall, uh, so far, this is working working out about how I expected it to, so that's great. Uh, but like I said, we just have to see what the footage looks like when we get back. Uh, how's it handling these transactions? I've got uh, shade and sun right here, so I'm doing this on purpose to see how it handles the different uh, exposure levels that we're experiencing now since I'm walking in and out of shade. Uh, seems to be doing okay, but uh, like I said, it's a small screen, so I won't know until we get back to the uh, to my office and look at the uh, footage on my computer. But that's that. So far, you know, uh, it's like I said, it's been doing as I was, I was hoping. So we just have to have to, have to see. Uh, like I said, once again, we are using the audio straight from the Action Three.
Well, I've made it back to the house and uh, I've had a chance to look at the footage and it looks fine. I'm very pleased with the results I've got from the day. Uh, even the outdoor test we did, it was fairly windy and I was using the mic in the Action 3 itself and it, it handled the wind okay. Uh, you can definitely hear uh, the, the wind in the, the clip itself, but uh, overall the mic sounded really well for the, the environment it was in. Uh, so I was very happy uh, with that result. Um, you know, the hyperlapse worked for fairly well. Uh, a pro tip, uh, clean your windshield if you're going to film behind the windshield with this, uh, especially doing like the hyperlapse of driving or something like that. Clean your windshield, it's probably a good idea. Uh, other than that, can you use this for a vlog? Absolutely. Uh, this makes an excellent uh, vlog camera. Uh, the addition of the front facing touch screen makes all the difference in the world. You can see your framing, uh, you can see the exposure. Um, audio auto exposure works okay, um, but really, if like in this setting here, uh, you probably want to go manual uh, settings uh, to get your ISO and your shutter speed and everything set. Uh, because for whatever reason, uh, it really likes to up the shutter speed itself, uh, and then uh, also raise the ISO, and then you get a lot of grain. It doesn't really like dropping that shutter speed down for whatever reason. Um, so if you're indoors or in tricky lighting situations, uh, this can handle it, uh, but you need to probably manually adjust the settings yourself uh, to dial in the best possible quality. Um, other than that, you know, uh, this is an awesome, awesome little kit. Uh, what I like about it the most is the fact that you can go uh, and just take this anywhere with you without a lot of hassle. It's, the kit itself is very compact, very convenient to use uh, with the uh, Pixel 7, you know, just constantly having to go into the camera menu. Um, when I would, my DT pocket here, what I'm using for the mic currently, um, you know, every time I'd use it with the Pixel 7, you have to go in there, and every time you film, you have to go in there and retell it to use the. Uh, external mic and not the one in the Pixel 7. That was a, a, a hassle. Uh, working with that little clamp, uh, cramp grip uh, that uh, for the tripod mount on it was, uh, was a hassle. Uh, this kit's just so much better. Um, just can't say enough about how easy this is to use. And that's the main thing about this uh, as a vlog setup. It's super convenient, super easy to use. You can use hyperlapse with it. You can take it underwater, you can do whatever. It's so versatile in what it can do. Um, of course, there are a couple of downsides to it. Uh, one thing I've noticed when you turn it on, it defaults to uh, stills mode for some reason. I don't know what's up with that. It's an action cam, it probably should default to video. So it's most people are gonna be using this for is video. Um, another thing that uh, was a little, um, aggravating to deal with was the four gig file sizes. Uh, anytime the file reaches four gigs, uh, as you're recording, it will create a new file. So you got a bunch of four gig files you have to combine uh, later in post, and a lot of times the audio doesn't match up. So if they could, they could fix that, this would be like, this would be awesome. But you know, that's the, the main issue I have with this as a vlog camera, is the fact that it divides those files up into four gig files. Uh, I work around that myself, uh, just trying to keep it under the uh, time frame per clip of that four gig cut, so I don't have to deal with those uh, in post. But if they could fix that, that would be awesome. I work around it. Of course, you can go, like I said, you can go in post and combine those audio files. And uh, if you're a little better with audio than I am, you could probably get that to sync up properly. Um, but it's just a huge hassle <laughs> currently. So like I said, I just try to work around it. Um, but at the end of the day, can you vlog with this? Yes, this kit is an awesome uh, vlog setup. You can't, uh, you, you're not gonna go wrong with it, right? I think if you get this, you'll be happy. I know some people had some issues with out of focus, uh, and them supposed to be out of focus or something like that, or the image being blurry. Uh, the one I have here, I just recently bought last week, it doesn't have that issue. So that's probably fixed with either a firmware update or uh, a change in manufacturing process. Uh, either way, I think that that issue itself is fixed. Um, so, at the end of the day, uh, I'm fairly 
confident that uh, this is this is gonna make an excellent uh, vlog camera for me for quite uh, quite some time and even if I do want to, to upgrade uh, this is still going to be useful to have so it's a win-win situation uh, even if you don't like the quality but if you can see here this uh, almost this entire video here uh, is shot uh, with the uh, action 3 cam except some of the the b-roll I had of the actual uh, unboxing there at the beginning so you know Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, please uh, subscribe, leave a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment as well. Uh, it definitely helps my channel. Um, so, all right, guys. Thanks. Have a great day.